This is our Fifi Flamingo applique pattern and in a previous video I showed how to add easy quilter to go borders by adding the sides first and then the top and bottom. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to do quilter to go borders with mitered corners and I'm going to add them to our Fifi Flamingo quilt to increase the size. So let's get started. Now to be honest I haven't actually done this before except on a sample and I'm pretty sure that it's going to work out so I'm quite excited to start this. So for a mitered border this is what you're going to need. Your border strips need to be the length of the quilt edge plus two times the width of the border plus an extra three inches just to be on the safe side. So you need that extra fabric extending past the edges of the quilt so that you're going to have enough fabric to make the mitres. The advantage of a mitered border is that you can sew your border strips together. So you may do say three or four strips and you know that they're going to all line up at the mitered corner making like a picture frame effect around the edge of your quilt. The backing strips will need to be the same length as the top strips, but I've made them half an inch wider. For the batting, the side strips will need to be the same length as the quilt and the top and bottom strips will need to be the same width of the quilt plus two times the width of the border plus an extra one inch or so that can be trimmed away later. I have cut them a quarter inch narrower than the top border strip. So the width of my top border with the three strips joined together is six inches wide. The batting is six and a quarter inches wide and the backing is six and a half inches wide. Where possible, it's always a really good idea to cut your border strips down the length of the fabric because this grain has little to no stretch and it helps to stabilize the quilt edges. This isn't always possible, but what I've actually done with my border strips is I've been able to cut two strips for the top of the quilt in the dark pink and then I've used that dark pink fabric for the backing border strips. So here's my example, I've cut eight one and three quarter inch strips for the top border and four times six and a half strips for the back of the border. I could easily cut these strips from the regular 42 inch wide fabric. So it's just a matter of playing around and doing a little bit of maths to see how wide and how many strips you can get out of a full width of the fabric, just like I've done with the pink fabric. For the pink spot, I cut six three and a half inch strips across the width of the fabric because this was more economical. I join these strips together on a 45 degree angle. I've done the 45 degree joins because they're less noticeable, but just make sure that they don't end up too close to where the mitered corners are going to be. I cut all of the border strips to the required length. Then I sewed them with a quarter inch seam allowance, sewing with the less stretchy strips on top. And I press the strips towards the darkest fabric. So here are my four border strips for the top, all cut and joined and ready to go. Here are my four backing strips all cut ready to go. And here are my four batting strips. Welcome back to Pattern Pill TV. If you're new here, I'm Monica and together with my daughter, Laura, we make videos to share with everyone how we make our quilter to go quilts. So giving you lots of ideas on how to make your own quilter to go quilts. So we've just finished making our island home quilt, which is the quilt behind me. This is our masterclass where we have made a quilt that is joined together using six different quilter to go techniques. We've had lots of people from all over the world make the quilt and it's been lots of fun. And it's just been like a really exciting thing to to do to be able to connect with so many people from all around the world. Now this quilt is on our website. It's a course that you can start anytime. All of the course notes are available to purchase from our website and the YouTube videos are always going to be on YouTube so that you can refer to them anytime. Other things that are happening at the moment is that Alora is designing a new applique collection called Nature's Creatures and she has already designed four. There's more coming. That's something that's happening weekly and and if you're interested, as I said, all the patterns are available to purchase from our website and you can sew along with people in our Facebook group or just sew along on your own and um, let us know in the comments how you're going and if you're enjoying things, we'd love to hear what everybody's doing. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're up to 50,000, actually over 50,000 subscribers and we just appreciate everybody so much following along and watching and seeing what we're doing because we love teaching people how to sew. We love empowering people to be able to make their own quilts. So let's get quilting. So the first step is to make sure that your quilt is square and you can easily do that just by folding it in half 
and just double checking that both sides are nice and square or well they're just the same size basically and then folding and double checking the other way now i've already double checked my quilt and i know that the edges the top and bottom is the same size i know that the sides are the same size so say for instance if your quilt wasn't the same size on the edges it's stretched out a little bit if you have a quilt that's just something you know like this you could easily just trim off a little bit and it won't be terribly noticeable but if it's a quilt that is made of patchwork blocks and everything really does need to be an exact size and you don't want to lose those quarter inch points um, or all those points that finish a quarter inch away from the edge you would have to work with the smaller measurement and ease the quilt in so that you end up with a nice square quilt but my quilt's the same size all around on well same size on both sides and top and bottom so the next step is to grab a fabric marker and your ruler and we're going to mark a dot at each corner that is a quarter of an inch in from the edge because our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch Okay, so take your ruler and position it like this so that here you can see, I'm just working with that quarter inch little square there and I'm just putting a little dot there like that. So this little dot is a quarter inch in from both edges of the quilt and make that little dot on all of the corners. So if you're wondering what this marker is, it's a Soline Duo marker. So one marker is dark and then you have the other one which then comes along and just removes that mark. It's really good because it makes a nice dark mark and it's easy to see. So the next step is to find halfway on all edges of the quilt. So just folding that in half and marking with a pin at the halfway mark. So I've taken my two longer strips because I'm going to sew the sides on first and I just want to do that same thing where I fold it in half lengthwise and mark the centre with a pin also. So I've taken one of my top side strips which is a longer one and I've also taken a backing strip. I've already found the centre of that and I'm going to place my top strip right sides together with the top and I'm aligning those center pins and I'm double checking that I have plenty of fabric at both ends, at the top and at the bottom. And then I'm going to take the back strip and I'm going to put this right sides together with the back of the quilt, aligning those center pins. And I'll take those pins out, I'll take two pins out and I'm just going to use one pin to pin all of those edges together. So go ahead, pinning from the center out, pinning all of the layers together and pinning exactly to the quarter inch corner dots and popping the pin exactly in at the quarter inch corner dots. Okay, let's go. So here is one side all pinned. This is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. So you can see the right side is right sides together with the back of the quilt. So at the machine, thread up with a thread that matches your quilt. I'm just using a neutral bone colored thread. I have a size 80 needle and I have my quarter inch foot attached. So my machine sews really well with just a quarter inch foot, but if you feel that you need to put your walking foot on, do that. But um, my seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch for this. Now, what you need to do is you need to start exactly at the quarter inch dot. So your pin will be there as a marker. You need to start by putting your needle in the down position exactly where that quarter inch dot is. As I said, you can see that from where your pin is marked and you'll need to secure that somehow. So you could either have the tie off on your machine set or you could sew forward, sew back. So it's a little reverse stitch. I'm actually going to do my six really small, six or seven really small stitches. I thought that might work out quite well and secure things quite nicely. And hang on to my threads from behind my small stitches that's going to really secure that and I now have a stitch length of three to continue sewing. So sew with a quarter inch seam allowance to the other quarter inch dot at the other end and finish with a nice secure stitch by reversing or some small stitches.
So make sure that all fabric edges are nice and level. You can even just lift up that border strip and get your hand in there to make sure everything's nice and level. And also notice how I've rolled up the edge of the quilt. I find that it helps it to feed through uh, much easier. You'll see that by cutting the border strips down the fabric in the same direction as the selvage, you don't have any stretch and it really does stabilize the edge of the quilt. So as I'm sewing, you'll see that I don't end up with those little stretchy bubbles that sometimes happen. So you can see I'm coming to the pin at the other end and I'm just going to put my stitch length down to that tiny stitch length again and I'll just continue sewing. I'm not going to sew over that pin because otherwise you could break a needle, but I just sew exactly to that pin. I'll just slide the pin out now. I'll do one more stitch and take the work out from the machine. Just like that. So the secret to this method is to make sure that your stitching on each border starts and finishes at those quarter inch dots and try to get that as accurate as possible and secure those stitches any way you like with the small stitches like I did or a reverse stitch or your tie off. So now I'm going to sew the borders on the other side in exactly the same way. Just like that. So I've got two loose side borders flapping in the breeze. <laughs> and now I just have to sew on the top and bottom borders. So before I sew on the top and bottom border, I'm just going to flip the strips out. So the top border and the backing border and give that a really good press just on both side edges first. Okay, so once again, find the centers of your top border strip and your backing border strip with pins. And then we're going to pin these strips on in just the same way. So the top border strip goes right sides together with the top and the back border strip goes right sides together with the back. Just aligning those center pins and pinning from the center once again out to those corner dots. Okay, so when you get to the end, your side border strips will be just facing out like this. And then you'll see, here's my back border strip coming straight along. And then this one, my top coming here. Now this is the point here where I want to pin and that's where we're going to stop sewing. And that will give us our edges that are all a quarter of an inch away. All of our border strips will be finished a quarter inch away from the corner of the quilt. So pinning just like that. And then just double check underneath to see that that is finishing exactly with the seam line of the side border strip. So I've gone ahead and pinned both the top and the bottom borders on. And I just want to show you again what this looks like because this could be the tricky part. So I have my top border strip pinned right sides together with the top and my back border strip pinned right sides together with the back. My side borders have been pressed out to the outside edges and I have pinned exactly to the seam line of the side borders. So that is where our quarter inch dots are at the corners. So now when I sew, I'm going to sew exactly from the seam line to the other seam line at the other side. And I'm gonna try and make that as accurate as possible. So now go ahead and sew on the top and bottom borders. So bring the needle down exactly at the pin and slide the pin out before you start to sew. And this time I've decided to start sewing with an automatic tie off.
decay and finishing exactly at my pin which is on the seam line. Okay, so all four border strips are now sewn on and all strips finish exactly a quarter of an inch away from the corner. So I'll just flip those top and bottom border strips out and give them a good press before we start doing the mitres. Okay, so this is how you make the mitre. So first of all, I have my ironing board and here's my quilt with all of my corners loose at the moment. So first of all, I'm just going to take the backing strips and lay them nice and flat like that. And I'm going to do my top mitres first of all. So I shall make one strip run straight like this and my other one will cross over and I'll just fold that back to make a mitre. Just like that. So one of the tricks to doing this is to make sure that, see where I've folded this back, that it is lining up with my side strips. And then I'll just take my ruler and I wanna make sure that this is going to be a nice correct mitre. So locate the 45 degree line on your ruler. And then all you have to do is just run that along. So my ruler's running straight here. There's my 45 degree line and I can see that I just need to bring that down a little bit like that. And so that's running on the 45 degree line. Also the top is running nice and straight. One thing to be wary of is to, you know, make your mitre kind of, you know, in the wrong direction and then you end up with this extra piece kind of coming out the top there. So just folding that back like that. And we want to make sure that our seams are going to line up and that's looking quite good. I'm just going to double check that again. I'm happy with that. Once you're happy with it, so press that mitre in place, making sure that all seams are lining up. And then very carefully, I'm going to flip that over and pin it. But something else I like to do before I do that is to just pin the underneath first of all. Just grabbing my two strips. I'm not pinning the backing strips or anything like that. I'm just pinning my two top border strips. And I'm just pinning those together first of all there. Just so that I know that they're going to stay in place. Because now my next step is to flip this over. Like this, I can now just push away my backing strips because it's all about my top strips at the moment. There we are, so like that. Look, there's always more than one way to do something, but this is how I do it. So you can see there, both border strips are lining up like that. And then I'm going to pin along here. But I just wanna make sure that my seams are going to line up exactly. So pinning those seams, when you do a quilt to go border like this, all seams have to be pressed out. Actually, you could press one the other way if you wanted to so they nest, but I'm just going to do them like this. If you're worried that you're not going to be able to see that, you can actually mark that line. And it's another really good opportunity to make sure that it's going to be nice and on a 45 degree line. So if my 45 degree is here and I can make sure, and that's actually looking really good. I'll just mark that to make it easy to stitch. Thank you, this one. Here we are, I'm just going to mark that now so I can see it. Some people just stitch in the crease. But as I said, there's always more than one way to do something. So if you have, it's just like a normal mitered border. So if you know a different way to do that and it works for you and you find that successful, um, just do whatever works for you. So now the next step is to head to the machine and stitch on this marked line or in the crease. So grab your quilt like this and head to the machine to sew the mitre. So you can see I've added lots of extra pins and I'm just going to sew from the outside of the border to this um, quarter inch point here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's quite bulky here and it's easier to start from the outside and work in.
So try and to sew as close as you can to the quarter inch dot. So let's see how we went. Look, happy with that. Everything's lining up. So now all we have to do is trim away just so that you have a quarter inch seam allowance. You can do that with a rotary cutter or I feel like at the moment it's just going to be a little bit easier for me to use scissors. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the back mitre. So you can press the seam open. Like that. And now I'm just going to repeat the process to do my mitres on the back. Okay, so two down and six mitre corners to go. <laughs> so all mitre corners are done. This is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. Now it's time to add the batting. Okay, so open out the side borders first of all and grab a strip of batting. So position the batting level with the top edge of our center section and position the edge of the batting. Just butt that up against the edge of the seam allowance so we're not overlapping anything. Lay that all down to the bottom edge. And I do want to make this edge here level with the bottom edge of where our corner is. So I'll come back and trim that in a minute. But first of all, just to get started, I'll flip the top over and I'm just going to pop some safety pins in and I'm just safety pinning in the side borders at this point in time. So I have just popped the pins here, there and everywhere, just enough to hold it all together. So spin the quilt and do the same on the other side. Now spin the quilt again and this time you can pop the batting in the top and bottom edges. So position your top strip of batting, you'll see that it will line up with our side batting there and also be extra careful if you're using light fabric to make sure that the batting butts up against the edge of the seam allowance because light fabrics will show a little shadow coming through. Trim the side batting if necessary. And I'm actually going to join this with some batting joining tape. So I'll iron that over the top, but you may need to hand sew that if you don't have batting joining tape, but it is important to make sure that that is joined. After you've joined the batting, flip the top strip over and continue pinning. 
Okay, so the batting is all pinned in place and it's time to quilt the borders. So to quilt the borders, I'm going to sew rows of quilting that are 3 8 of an inch away from the seam. My first one is going to be 3 8 of an inch away from the border seam and that's going to catch in the edge of the batting. So that's going to be nice and secure. And I thought I'd just continue with the same 3 8 of an inch on both sides of the seam. And I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so I just ran out of bobbin and I'm overstitching this border because I'm tired and I'm hungry and I wanna go have some dinner. <laughs> and we wanna get this edited so that we can get it out and show you. So that's how you do a quilt as you go border with mitered corners. I'll finish all the stitching. It will be on our socials and also on our blog. Now I have been promising a faux mitered border, but I thought it was a good idea just to show you how to do a real one first. So that video will be out soon when we get around to it and Make sure you subscribe, subscribe to our website too, and so that you can find out when our next videos are coming out. So thanks for watching everyone, bye.